Hi, this is Dr. Shannon Wong in Austin, Texas. I'm going to describe a complication of laser cataract surgery using the femtosecond laser known as the anterior capsule extension. This can occur with any femtosecond laser and it involves an imperfection in the anterior capsulotomy. In this patient we've created a 4.5 millimeter capsulotomy. We do our usual hydrodissection and begin routine phacal emulsification of the cataract. We have employed a divide and conquer technique and we use an Olsen chopper made by Epsilon Instruments. The lens, lens spins in a normal fashion and we have at this point divided the lens into two pieces and I split it into now three pieces, two quadrants and one hemisphere. I take the first two quadrants and I now have one hemisphere or one half of the nucleus remaining. The anterior capsule is intact and now at this moment the anterior capsule splits. This chopper is not sharp but the stress of splitting the nucleus puts strain on the anterior capsulotomy. The capsulotomies made with femtosecond lasers are made with micro pulses of laser and by looking at the anterior capsule edge of these capsulotomies there can be small micro perforations that are not completely smooth and if the capsule is stressed at the right spot with just enough pressure these micro perforations in the anterior capsule margin can extend toward the zonules. In this case, it happened at 12 o'clock on the monitor here. And we've identified it at the moment that it happened, which is key, therefore we can be proactive to prevent making this situation more involved than it needs to be. This anterior capsule extension appears to go underneath the iris and at this stage we don't know exactly how far it's gone. We can see it right there at 12 o'clock. Looks like a little upside down V. In order to put as little stress on the anterior capsule as possible, we don't want the anterior chamber collapsing, so we use viscoelastic to fill the anterior chamber such that as we remove our various phaco emulsification and irrigation and aspiration hand pieces that the capsular bag never collapses. When we use irrigation and aspiration, we're careful to remove the cortex that is furthest from the anterior capsule defect. And as we migrate and remove the cortex that's closest to the anterior capsule defect, we're extremely careful and gentle. We want to put as little strain on the air of weakness as possible. We also want to make sure that the capsular bag remains inflated throughout this process and that we do not let it shallow so we make sure our infusion is constantly on coming through the irrigation and aspiration handpiece.
we're using a Zeiss Lumera T microscope, which gives just outstanding visualization of the capsule and any cortical fibers that remain. So we're able to be very thorough in removing any cortical remnants. Here again, when we remove the irrigation and aspiration handpiece, we fill the capsular bag with viscoelastic so it does not shallow. We're inserting the restore implant. We use the cyclodialysis spatula to keep the optic inside the capsular bag as much as possible and not on top of the capsular bag. We want to make sure that leading haptic goes inside the bag. We use a generous amount of viscoelastic throughout this whole process to cushion this IOL and keep it floating within the capsular bag opening itself. The viscoelastic helps us to control exactly how fast and where we want to place this lens and its haptics. So now the leading haptic is underneath the anterior capsule leaflet. We push the optic, which is six millimeters, into the capsular bag underneath the 4.5 millimeter capsulotomy. And then we gently rotate the trailing haptic underneath the capsular bag. We position this lens such that the haptics are essentially 90 degrees away from the anterior capsule extension. As we remove the viscoelastic with the INA handpiece, we go behind the optic to remove any residual Elon GV. The lens centers very well, and we use the anterior capsulotomy. We center the optic of the lens underneath the anterior capsule leaflets. And at the conclusion of this case, all the incisions are self-sealing. This patient did quite well. He was 2020 J1 Plus Plano the day after cataract surgery. And so the point of this case is to show that even with the latest generation of femtosecond lasers as of February 2014, anterior capsule extensions can occur. This patient used a soft fit interface, but as long as uh, early identification and 
proper management is employed, the patients do just fine. The lens was perfectly centered at the conclusion of the case. Thank you very much for your time and attention.